Yeah. It's um, it's Ricardo here. I think a colleague of mine spoke to you earlier. Said I'd be giving you a call. Oh yes, yes, I do remember. Yeah, spoke spoke to him earlier. Yeah. We're actually making a film about Lee Sibico Campbell. Who? Lee. He was one of the one of the fellow players on the um, Ultimate Poker dot com showdown. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember him. Yeah. The, yeah that's yeah. the one. What I was looking for is if you could tell me a little bit about your experience with Lee on the show and how he was off camera. Okay, um, well to start with, when I met him I thought he was really nice. He was quite quiet, but he just was so friendly to everyone and he just put everyone at ease. He won, I think it was the fourth episode, he, yep. he won that one. And it was just like Jekyll and Hyde, he just changed. And he, I asked about episode, I remember he came running downstairs. He just came up and like pointed at him and went, ha, beat you. It was so aggressive and, oh, it was horrible. It just, it was quite scary actually because he, it just, I've just never seen anyone change like it. It's like, it just flipped. It was horrible. He kept saying, oh, it's justice that I'm winning, you know. And we just didn't know what to do because he'd been so nice. He was sticking his fingers up at us every time he won a hand. Yeah, I mean, they didn't show that on the, on the cameras because they yeah. didn't. Uh, it was just unbelievable. I wanted to ask you a little bit about your breakdown in the final because Lee had told me that it was it was so hurt to see you upset that that's one of the things that had thrown his game. Well, I had a right to be upset, to be honest. It was absolutely awful. Well, I, I know I can I can appreciate it. It's just that what I'm trying to understand is how Lee felt at that point. Uh, the only thing Lee was feeling was me. Sorry? He was touching me. All the time, throughout that entire game, he just had his hand under the table. He'd have one hand under the table, or his knee. He was rubbing his foot up and down my foot. It was, oh, it was disgusting. He even took his shoe off, and his, his foot was all sweaty, and he was sliding up and down my leg, trying to put me off just by touching me or whatever, whatever his reasons were. And anyway, he came up to me during the break, pulled me to one side, um, and he threatened me. Um, okay, yeah, no one can prove it, but he said that. He was going to hunt me down if I didn't let him win the money. He, he was going to hunt me down. He said he was the best player. He deserved to win it. He said that he owned me. Just it was too much. And like when we then went back to play, I mean I was still completely shaken up. And he was just staring at me throughout the whole thing. He just every time I looked his way, he was just staring. And so I, I let him. I let him. I let him take me down. I kept playing. Let him get his flush, and he took me down. And. Uh, I didn't know what else to do. He said he was going to hunt me down and get me. Right. But did, didn't I hear on the show that Lee had said about taking a comfort break? <laughs> yeah, probably because he was so used to snuggle with himself. He'd done what he wanted. There's no comfort in there. He, he's evil. He's absolute evil. He's horrible. That's a shame. I mean, when I first met Lee and I was like... He, he was standing on his own a lot of the time and pacing up and down and he started reading, just, he was like Billy Nomads really. Um, every time I came out of the toilet there he was, waiting, waiting at the side of the door, waiting to see us. And you know, I was a bit put off at first because I've, I've been a bodyguard for a long time and worked on the doors and I felt like at one point I thought I just wanted to give him a backhander and say, oh, you know, I'm what you'll do. But uh, then I, I was sort of thinking about it and I thought, well, the lad just must not have any mates and I just ended up feeling a bit sorry for him, you know. A long time ago I had a dog who used to follow us around like, and I, I was thinking about the dog, I used to really like the dog and I felt a bit sorry for it. He used to follow us to school and all kinds and it, it sort of reminded us of what Lee was doing, you know. When we spoke to, to Lee originally, he said that when he was down in London with you, he went training with you at the gym and things. <laughs> I mean, 
Oh, oh, sure. I, 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 hang, hang on a minute, Mark. Did you say wife? Uh, uh, yeah, he, he did. I mean, he was married. Um, she left, actually left him during one of the shows. And uh, he didn't even seem bothered. He was too busy, like, asking where Penny was. And, and I think it was the result of a, a talk to the girls. And, you know, basically, you know, I, I think they must have seen like us. So his, his obsession with Penny, that's probably contributed to uh, her, her leaving her. And I don't blame the girl, really, you know. Penny had a makeup artist that's followed her around. And Lee actually asked, and I, this is terrible, and I know this, this sounds weird, but it, it just shows you how obsessed he was with it. He actually asked this makeup artist for a pair of pennies of underwear. Can you imagine that? Absolutely terrible. I feel really sorry for his wife, or his, or should I say his ex-wife. Jackpot. Lee had a wife. Not only that, but a wife who'd left him. And during the TV show... I had to find her. This was it, the one person who could show me the real Lee Civico Campbell. I'd already established that Lee had lied to me and that he was not what he claimed to be, but how deep did the rabbit hole go? Ruth Civico Campbell was the one who could answer this question for me, and all I had to do was find her. 